Hello everybody, and welcome back to the second part of the review of Bjork's full album of Vespertine. That was a weird intro. My name is Lodens the Fan Roy, and this is the Rock and Beard Podcast, the show where we break down albums track by track and usually of the not hip hop variety, and that's relevant because most of what we do is hip hop stuff here. Anyway, welcome. This is part two, meaning that this is like halfway through the show. So if you want to check out part one, you'll get the full up into this point moment, the whole vibe and tone and everything. And I felt like there was a vibe that we was writing on that last first part. So rather than wait till a later date or anything, I'm just about 15 minutes later, here I am, part two is ready, being recorded. That's what's up. So for those who choose to just kind of go from here, I recognize I'm not a professional, but most importantly, I look forward to your comments and I think it's super important for my growth and everybody to like benefit from the review to hear what y'all smart people have to say. So share that with me down below. I look forward to reading to it, reading it all, answering it all. Holy crap, I can't even talk. It's a podcast, the one job, you know? Anyway, we're going to move into track seven on this album. So for tracks one to six, part one, moving on through, it's time for Aurora. So this song, I don't know how else to describe it, but shimmery and upbeat and kind of angelic in the way she's like, ha ah, ha ah, ha, kind of stuff going on in it. And I thought it was absolutely, of everything we've heard, my least of the favorites of the song. And I mean that with all the respect in the world, implying that it's actually a significantly fantastic track and it's just... Relative to the six before it, this is the first one where I felt like my interest dipped a little bit is what I'm trying to convey. But when I say a little bit, I'll spoil that shit. I give this a 4.4 instead of the 4.5s and above I've been handing. It's still way better, in my opinion, from a quality, like objective looking at it point of view than most music I've heard. Just because Bjork is, is pretty interesting. And I think one of the metrics I use is I've not heard things that sound like it because like in art I do believe that distinction counts and the fact that 18 years later I I can't say I've heard anything that kind of sounds like Aurora or anything Bjork really does like she just just so out there that it's truly amazing to me almost everything I hear just sounds amazing from a quality perspective um I had a lot of trouble getting into the beat per se while recognizing how good it is lyrically this song is apparently about a childhood memory of hers where she like fell down and like busted up her lip and um used snow in her mouth to like ease the pain that's apparently what it's like about in a literal sense so threading the glacier head looking for moments of shine from twilight to twilight so she's from iceland where there's gonna be glaciers and crap and she's from like uh, the type of world where you're probably allowed to play outside at dark by yourself unlike me in the city where like you you couldn't really do that um so she was out you know all the time and then aurora utter mundane and then what i take from that it's almost like the the beauty and the simpleness and whatnot I think of Aurora Borealis, you know, the Northern Lights and the natural beauty found in that. And just how kind of nice nature is in crap. And how, in a sense, it's like completely mundane in and of itself in a lot of ways, but it's still amazing. That's what I picture from all of that. Um, then she goes, Aurora, guard a sparkle, shoot me beyond this suffer, the need is great. And I'm like, okay, that, I don't know. It doesn't actually mean a lot to me, but if I picture her falling down and busting up her lip, I get it. Uh, maybe she's relying on nature to ease the pain or something. But it's, yeah, it's it's whatever. And then it got a sparkle of mountain shade suggests the shape. I tumble on my knees, fill the mouth with snow. The way it melts, I wish to melt into you, aurora, etc. Now, when she does that last part, I'm like, oh, it's kind of like innuendo y. So in another reading of it, you know, threading the glacier head, looking for moments to shine from twilight to twilight, that could be like the dome of a cock and she's playing with the tip of it, you know, from twilight, looking to make it shine or elicit its goo. Because anyway, I don't know how much you guys really care about the deepness of that. You know, got a sparkle, shoot me beyond this suffer. The need is great. She's lusting for that crap. Um, I tumble down on my knees, fill my mouth with snow. So she, um, another, you know what color the, the semen is. And so in another version of this song, 
it's kind of like she's basically sucking a dick at the end there now maybe i'm just looking at the sex stuff because of everything but you know it's kind of the album she put it on so she seems to be into this kind of innocent lyrics double entendre into something much more but um i do i do really believe that this song is about him kind of blasting on her or on her face in her mouth something but she's definitely interested in in that kind of action and i think that that's definitely awesome stuff uh that that i don't have a lot more to comment on the song it's kind of slow and she sings it really beautifully i don't think i really mentioned it too too much on this review but her vocal talent is absolutely incredible i just don't know how many times i can say york can sing better in, in such an incredible way it's freaking fantastic and she conveys such emotion and whatnot i mean on the sex side of the song it's kind of nice how she connects with this person but i, I don't know it was all right it was a good song like i said 4.4 it's it's uh i don't know what else to say about it so we'll just move on to the next track which is called an echo a stain this song is absolutely freaking weird so basically it's based on sarah kane's play crave I'm just going to read this crap on Genius because, like, I don't know. A one-act play, Crave uses a nonlinear poetic style. The dialogue is intertextual. There is no context, no stage direction, and characters A, B, C, and M have identifiable sex and genre only from the context within the play. Crave continues the theme of pain and love that Kane had explored with previous plays, but is stylistically a departure. The play contains several dark themes presented as issues haunting the four characters. Such themes include rape, incest, pedophilia, anorexia, drug addiction, mental instability, murder, suicide, bye-bye, YouTube monetization. Um, basically, that's what inspired this track. <coughs> and I think it's worth bringing up because fundamentally, I don't know, I don't know let us go through it together it's got this like eerier darker tone to the music which i think is kind of refreshing it's a little more upbeat relative to the last track but it's mysterious and creepy in a cool way that i find really enthralling and i really liked it music wise um she touched my arm and smiled one of these days soon very soon love you till then love you till then feel my breath on your neck and your heart will race don't say no to me you can't say no to me i won't see you denied and i'm like i guess um that's a, it's a little weird because it sounds like now she's got i guess a more maleistic perspective looking at a girl touching him and i guess his desire is like i'm gonna get what i want i'm gonna take it by any means is kind of the implication i feel from that um and then when you get to the bridge i'm sorry you saw that i'm sorry he did it an echo a stain it kind of implies to me that a rape of sort takes place in this moment and Bjork as like an observer almost in as like switches to a narrator view and kind of apologizes and then I can't say no to you free falling complete and I'm like what the shit this is like such an abstractly fucking weird insertion into this album and relative to like the flow i think we've been getting all of it and maybe this is some trauma maybe that she's expressing or i know that a lot of people have lived through kind of kind of moments you saw that and maybe this is i don't know like describing the complicated situation of dating someone like that but like i can't say no to you say nothing and then free falling complete it's almost like a person or maybe like in the sense of bjerk's story she's trying to like compare herself giving in to this like i don't really i can't connect this to anything it just feels kind of out there in my opinion from the point about it it's like it's like i don't know how this fits into the album like is this the fear that comes with it all is this like something from her past that's haunting her and then the guy is like like an escape from it all i'm i'm super not sure i did forget to say i think that the the beginning of aurora has the dingleys of frosty coming through it so i'll mention that and 
I love how this song sounds for how little I understand its relevance. Like, playing through the project, it sonically works. It's just... I would love to hear your thoughts on how this fits into the narrative of the album. Or maybe I was just making up the narrative and it doesn't really exist. So let me know what you think there. And I think, on that note, I gave it a 4.5. And we can just move on to how there's sun in my mouth. So I feel like this track is like a more confident Disney-esque sound to it. She has like a, a string orchestra, a harp, and a soft electronica behind her. What the fuck's an electronica? I should have Googled that. Um, sometimes I wonder if I should cut this stuff out, but then I feel like it would take away the charm of what I do. You can let me know what you think, and then I'll keep them in either way. Um, this song is a poem like lyrically it's a poem from ee e. cummings i will wait out published in the year 1923 and it's the shortest song with lyrics on the album at just over two minutes it's very she sings it slowly and calm and almost like there's as she's singing out the words this mysterious excitement kind of fills into it so she goes i will wait out till my thighs are steeped in burning flowers and i'm like bjerk's back to getting on getting it on like this basically the point of this album is we gonna fuck um i will take the sun in my mouth and leap into the into the ripe air alive with closed eyes to dash against darkness in the sleeping curves of my body i shall enter fingers of smooth mastery with chasteness of seagulls <laughs> will, will i complete the mystery of my flesh uh will i complete the mystery of my flesh so apparently seagulls are stupidly monogamous birds so um she's not really going in uh, with other people is what I, I believe this song is about masturbating why will i complete the mystery of my flesh to the dash against darkness and the sleeping curves of my body i shall enter my fingers a smooth mastery and if you think about the chasteness of seagulls being that you're not with other people you're you're not with another partner etc or you're with that one person but now i i, I feel like she she's exploring herself and will I complete the mystery of my flesh is will I come is what I'm taking from that. I mean, I know it's less words and it's way less poetic, but I mean, I'm fascinated, I guess, by the fact that all this is out there and I had no idea any of this shit existed. Like, I've never even heard any Cummings poem ever before. Poetry's dope. I feel like I should actually read more poetry. Most of my poetry intake is, is straight lyrics, but seeing this and seeing this obscure masturbation poem from the 20s, that's fresh. That's the type of shit I would want to read because I'm a bit of a freak like that. Ultimately speaking, I thought this was a very nice track. It felt like a sureness, like after being unlocked, she felt more comfortable with the world. So maybe in combination with an echo and a stain, it's almost like there's this fear and this darkness of what comes, you know, like she's with the guy, it's moving along. And on the one hand, there's this dark fear and the anxiety of what can come mixed with the new liberation and feelings of what she now has with herself followed it up in the next track maybe i'm going too much into it i know eminem likes to do those song couplet concepts a lot so maybe maybe burke does too um either way i gave this one a 4.25 i kind of i kind of don't like it as much while again admiring it for how incredibly well put together it is but string orchestral harp music is totally not what i go to first in life um so I guess on that note, we'll move on to Heirloom. I like the sound of this, this like track a lot. Like the way the beat just picks up in this kind of upbeat, staticky, fun kind of way that it rolls on through. I feel like overall it's almost like a breath of fresh air like some energy has come back into the album um i'll be honest i'm gonna take some ganders at what i think the lyrics could imply but this one also maybe wasn't the clearest track to me uh she goes i have a recurrent 
dream, which is, I've never heard anyone say recurrent before. I, it's a real word. I just, I'm used to recurring, but maybe recurrent is cooler. I have a recurrent dream. Every time I lose my voice, I swallow, I swallow little glowing lights my mother and son baked for me. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Like that to me is like, okay, maybe there's some, let's try this together. Like she has a, she feels some anxiety or some callback to a particular moment that gives her anxiety every time she loses her voice. That sounds like an anxious thing. I swallow little glowing lights my mother and son baked for me. I don't know. Love bubbles. I don't know. That's a weird I don't, I don't know what that is. She's, she's, maybe these glowing lights are, are nothing or maybe they're literally lights. I don't know. During the nights, they do a trapeze walk until they're in the sky right above my bed while I'm asleep. My mother and son pour into me warm glowing oil into my wide open throat. Look, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here, but that kind of sounds like she's sleeping and somebody it sounds like warm glowing oil into my wide open throat like that sounds like on the i can't help but not picture somebody jizzing down her throat at this point simply because we've gone through all of the sex stuff on this project but on the same time when she goes my mother and son pour it into me that's like a weird thing that makes it almost not sex like at all like i don't know who wants to i imagine if if you have a kid the last people you want to think about when you fucking is your mom and your son either way there's this dream i guess she's having where this is what they're doing and they're putting this glowing warming crap in there into her throat uh, and it makes her feel better and then every time we lose our voices we dreams little lights our mother and son bakes for us and then it just kind of repeats a whole bunch and I don't I don't like I don't know if this like is meant to be that these lights that are coming in and out of her mouth are supposed to I, I don't know if it's energy or what it is but that that's basically what's going on in this track from a lyrical perspective but it gives you on this like almost ethereal adventure like emotionally speaking I feel like we've gone on this journey throughout this album where if you think about the process of falling in love in the first place when you really get into something you get the mystery then the fears and the darks and everything to the point where i don't know i guess you learn I, you could almost take it like this song is her learning how to cope with those moments where she wants to like run away you know because that is kind of something i feel on this album like as she's developing the intimacy with her partner that uh she isn't comfortable with it a hundred percent so she's kind of I, don't, I like using this idea this dream this this like memory or whatever it is to comfort herself and make sure that she she can kind of like not give in to the impulses and and then i guess your mother and son would be like I don't know. I don't know. Does she have a son at that point? I don't think she even had a kid. I, I, I don't think I can go that much deeper on this one. I feel like maybe there's some, some really obvious this point that I'm come completely missing on this track, and I don't really know what it is. But I definitely think I'm left with the sense that Bjork is really into things going into her mouth. And I know that might not be the point of this song, but she brings it up on multiple tracks. And I don't know, I guess that fact kind of makes me like Bjork a little more. I know it might not be a politically correct statement or anything, but she's kind of feisty. And all things considered, I feel like Bjork is this little forest nymph that, if nothing else, I, I want nothing more than to have a conversation with this lady at this point in my life. Like if any of y'all know her and can set up some kind of interview type thing, holy crap, my gratitude would be eternal. That's all I'm trying to say because she has inspired me so very much. I gave this song a 4.5 because it's amazing to listen to, even if it confuses the shit out of me. I like it. So let's move on to the next track on this project called Harm of Will. Thank you. 
So like on the first time I listened to the album, I was at work. And I didn't really know what the album was about. I figured it was lovey based on the tone. I didn't really listen deeply to the lyrics because I was multitasking in shape. Maybe I'm a perv. But I can tell you the first time I heard then leave her coily place crouch sucking him for a desire with her on knee. I heard that shit crystal freaking clear. And I was like, did she just say that? And if I remember it now, it was Googling that lyric that got me to the tidbit on Reddit about how Bjork uh, put in the pagan poetry video her blowing her husband. Or not husband. I don't know if they were married at that point. I didn't really bother to look that up yet. So let's take a look at this track. It's got, again, this peaceful, serene tone to it. Like, you know what? It's just the music is so calm and magical on this album that it almost is just juxtaposing my expectations for the content. And maybe there's like a whole bunch of music like this I've just simply never heard. But I can't say I've heard an album approach the subject matter she's approaching like this with the sound she's choosing to use because I feel like the music is evoking emotions that are almost deliberately not as peaceful or kind or nice as it sounds. And I think that is truly fascinating about the way she put this project together. So she goes, if there is a troubadour washing, it is he. If there is a man about town, it is he. If there is one to be sighed, it is he. If there are nine she's, they are brought from me. And you get the sense that she's uh, a bit describing a player who is a little bit of a man about town and uh, is willing to fornicate with multiple peoples and ends up getting all of the girlies. And that, that's just kind of what it is. But the way she sings it is so soft and just kind of like almost like she's enthralled with this person and she knows exactly the kind of guy she he is because or whatever and then i don't know it's a little bit like in the first part you kind of picture it's from the guy's perspective when he goes they are brought for me but maybe it's from her perspective as she watches or maybe maybe she's describing some threesome shit that i got down for for a quick minute i'm just saying they're celebrities you never know they're probably a little more open-minded than we are i don't know i'm pretty open-minded not everybody seems to be that open-minded though but uh then this is as is she this way is as is she and he placed her unclothed long 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 legged on top of the family tree so i think that's his dick and she has him on top i guess i don't know or maybe in the middle of the intercourse it flips around and if he has chosen the point while she is under him then leave her coily place crouch shucking him for it is I with her on knee. And uh, I, I guess, oh, maybe, no, this is all still the guy, right? This is just qu- written in such a specific way because he's going, hmm, I now have placed her down and she's blowing me and I am standing here in my mighty and she is on her knees with it in my mouth. And then there's some gibberishy stuff going on. Because I suppose that's when the sex is going down and, you know, it's gibberishy sounding, especially if there's stuff inside of people's mouths. I leave her without pither field and leave her be. Leave it be, for he controls what there will be. He makes his face known to none, for if he is seen, then all will we and all will know, know me. And that's a, a little interesting point. It kind of discards them and I guess hides who he is because if people find out who you are, you can't keep running this game. Or maybe, I, I don't know, maybe it's also alluding to, to something bigger, like like some temptation or desire, some ethereal force that drives all of this. Either way, um, this song lyrically is a collaboration with Harmony Corrine, who uh, kind of worked it out, and so I thought that would be pretty cool. Uh, to point out to y'all and I thought this was still just like another fascinating song because I suppose looking into the psychology of a guy in his position as he uses a person and almost admires his ability to get what he wants out of them and whatnot and just understanding how to manipulate that desire and whatnot is 
an opposite perspective like i i guess everyone was going to imagine what it's like to be on the other end of things or maybe this is how she fears her person is or she sees her man or something i don't know i like this song though i thought it was really well put together really interesting to listen to beautiful honestly a beautiful track and i gave this one another 4.5 on 5 on this album well, that's gonna leave us on to the longest song on this project which also happens to be the last song on the project and we'll be talking about unison i think this is a really awesome end to this album so the song is magical in a conclusive kind of way but in a positive upbeat happy like close kind of way i don't know how to describe that lyrically it runs through like one hand loves the other so much on me born stubborn will always be before you count one two three i will have grown my own private branch on this tree so here you have this person and she's like i know who i am i'm, I'm not giving into your shit oh you think we're gonna share the tree fuck that i got my private branch on the tree i'm gonna have my stuff my independence i'm gonna do my thing and that's just what it is i will never give in and then she goes you gardener you discipliner you domestically i can obey all of your rules and still be b i never thought i would compromise and i think that's interesting because i suppose if you're in a relationship with somebody and they're being a stubborn ass person and they want to fight all the ways to make it work in a sense you're gonna have to be like a gardener and like work with them and be a little bit of a discipliner and mold them into somebody that i guess can be domesticated and i know it sounds kind of rough but let's say this person wants to be in a relationship and has never done it there may be a bit of compromising that has to come with it and maybe part of that involves a couple of confrontations and a couple of situations where the person realizes that they have to give in in a sense and what i think is amazing here is when she goes i can obey all of your rules and still be be and that's the point where she realizes i can be in this relationship i can be with you i can be the person you want me to be in a sense and all the while i'm still being myself i'm still being the person i am and i think that's the beauty of a good and healthy relationship is essentially when you're obeying all the rules just by being yourself and that's just an incredible beautiful thing that it's like what's amazing is that she's willing to compromise and how and if you listen to this album she fights back there's all these reasons not to but at the end of the day she kind of gives into it all and is like yeah i never thought i would but let's unite tonight we shouldn't fight embrace you tight let's unite tonight and that's fascinating so i guess we're implying that maybe the relationship's a little turbulent maybe she's doing some runaway bullshit and everything and now they finally reached a point where you know she's like nah i think it's time for us to be together kind of thing i'm done i'm willing to give in to this i thrive best hermit style with a beard and a pipe and a parrot on each side and now i can't do this without you so that's interesting too because this is in the sense where all of her life maybe she was super independent super on her own she never really thought she would work with anyone else and i say this because i had this said to me like a gajillion freaking times in my life but at the end of the day when you find that person that, that actually can thrive with in spite of your natural tendencies you end up at a point where that last line but now i can't do this without you becomes truth where she was a certain way and even in a sense she's truly independent but the idea of not having him around is way worse and she needs that now in a way that is truly cute it's, it's just cute to listen to and then she kind of repeats the chorus and whatever a bunch of times ending on just repeating unison and if you look at how this track kind of plays into it all it's like like i said it was this tumultuous journey as you can tell this might be like the first time she's truly given herself over to somebody else in this kind of a super deep relationship kind of way i guess a real one as some people would call it and after exploring it trying to understand it dealing with the emotions the ups the downs the excitements the, the fears of what could happen what could go wrong like look at harma will in a sense it could just be the fear of what if my dude's a player smashing everybody and here i am just another play thing you know but at the end of the day instead of worrying about any of those things let's just come together and be like together because i'm willing 
to compromise on who I am to get to that point between us where like we can have the functional thing and if i know anything about relationships it's that communication and compromise are the two c's you need to happiness communication compromise so i love how this album ends i love the way she rolls this out and i think it's uh it's almost like one of the more perfect conclusions to an album i've heard in a while uh i gave the song a 4.5 because it kind of sounds similar to all the other ones i gave a 4.5 it's equal in compositional skill it's as climatically built up as all the other ones it's six minutes and 46 seconds or whatever but you don't get bored it just builds into a point where by the end you're just so excited and happy for her that like she has this moment where she was able to get to that place and i thought that was truly wonderful of her to take the time to even bother to share that with us and to let us know what's going on in that front and to to almost put forth a beautiful semblance of an honest beginning to a relationship so i guess i guess we'll just get to the album wrap-up portion um i gave this project what did i give it here uh 4.554 on five i'm not caught as a classic album like truthfully this is a, a beautiful classic album in the sense that i think it's timeless i mean i bet this album sounds as amazing today as it did it when it dropped and i think in 20 30 years this music is going to still remain timeless and allow me to, to clarify that um this album taps into base emotions of love and sex and and getting into relationships and all of the kind of stuff that i think that anybody that has had the pleasure of, of engaging in romantic endeavors with others can can say that they've experienced and when you have a project that can tap into such base things it becomes a little bit more eternal this project is a story of falling in love from all of the angles of it and i feel it's really honest like it really happened to her and simultaneously i feel like she did it in a way where a it's impressive how fucking explicit this album is for how radio friendly this album also is there's almost like no lines that would be censored meanwhile she's talking about inserting it into slips and all sorts of stuff but fundamentally i think in a hundred years people could take the poetry she's created here and do what she did and flip it into some kind of new art form because again she's just tapping into such primal real things that you just feel on every single song and you feel these deep emotions that remind you of your own experiences and I believe that's what it takes to make a timeless classic where the music will still sound fresh in 20 years. So this is an incredible project and I would highly recommend it to a lot of people. Um I don't know, this one was like one of, I don't know if to me this is her most like pop friendly album, maybe it is. I feel like uh Homogenic would be an easier sell for me to get other people to listen to, but I don't even know what my favorite Bjork album is. I feel like they're all so freaking different and I like them all for such different reasons. That's about the end of this review though. I feel like I'm a little bit drawing it on now. So thank you all for watching. I really appreciate you being here with me. Sorry again about the wait for this. I know it took a while. Um, feel free to leave a comment about anything positive, negative. You want to add something, I don't really mind. We can have a little conversation in the comments. So I'll make that effort to answer you if you make that effort to leave the comment. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I'll get on the next Bjork review as soon as I can. I don't know if it's Medulla or whichever one comes next. We're going to get to it. We're going to do them all. That's the goal here. Just like Pokemon. Got to catch them. Oh, got to catch them. Oh. Anyway, like the video if you did. Please subscribe. It, it, it'll help so much for all of us in the long run. There's more than just me on the channel. Special thanks to the patrons. Ismail Gadamsey, Chris Prado, Jonathan Barnes, DJ Black Hurricanes, Lindell Williams, Coney Sparks, and I, I think that's everybody. Thank you all for watching. Uh, thank you for your support, Patreon peoples. Wow, I'm a little tired now. They helped us get a new camera. They helped us you know gonna help us get a website in the near future they get to tell us albums they want to see us review so in a couple of weeks it'll be ismail's request and then yeah so if you want to see us do anything in particular or you just want to support us you can check that out and it would be hella fresh of you 
I make music myself. You can check that all out with links in the description and let me know what you think. And on that note, thanks for watching, folks. Have yourselves a wonderful day.